Hello, and welcome to This Month in Datadog, where we'll update you on our latest features, product announcements, events, and more. This episode, we're spotlighting our inaugural State of DevSecOps report, which distills our analysis of tens of thousands of apps, container images, and cloud environments into seven facts about app security and the adoption of DevSecOps best practices. We're also covering a new feature that centralizes alerts from Datadog and third parties, a view of large-scale trends across your containerized infrastructure, and cloud cost recommendations, which correlates billing and observability data to surface opportunities to reduce spend. Before we get to those, a quick reminder that Dash 2024 is right around the corner, and there are a ton of reasons you're going to want to attend. Dash is Datadog's flagship annual conference. Join the largest gathering of Datadog experts and let's build and scale the next generation of applications, infrastructure, security, and teams together. With two days packed with hands-on workshops, customer sessions, an expo hall full of partners, a keynote detailing our latest products and releases, and plenty of networking with your peers, and so much more. There really is something for everyone. Don't wait. Visit the link shown to register for Dash 2024, which will be June 25th and 26th, right here in New York City. And now, on with the show. Kicking things off is a brand new feature, Datadog Event Management. Depending on the complexity of your environment, root causes of incidents are often buried, creating alert fatigue and making teams less effective. That's where this new feature can help. Datadog Event Management collects alerts from Datadog and third-party tools and brings them together onto our platform where they're correlated with observability data from your apps and services. This new feature helps responders group alerts and identify patterns so they're better able to triage them and understand the context of incidents. Datadog Event Management is now generally available. Check out the show notes for links where you can learn more. Next up is Container Image Trends. Building on our container image view, which offers insights into each and every image in your infrastructure, this new view helps you rapidly get up to speed on large-scale trends across your containerized infrastructure. With the trends view, you can answer questions like, what's the size of my largest image? Or what's the age of my oldest? You also get a map of containers running images from specific registries and repos, so you can better understand the infrastructure footprint of each image. And this view also shows vulnerabilities within images, helping you see where risks are inside your environment, which registries need to be remediated, and more. This trends view is available in public beta for Datadog container monitoring users today. Wrapping up our new features is cloud cost recommendations. Located within cloud cost management, our recommendations feature helps you identify and prioritize opportunities to reduce spend, as well as empowers engineers to take action. Cloud cost recommendations bring together billing and observability data to surface over-provisioned and unused resources that you can then identify as priorities for engineers to optimize. You can also effectively manage the lifecycle of cost-saving optimizations by creating cases and Shira issues or dismissing recommendations directly in Datadog. Recommendations are available in public beta for cloud cost management customers who use AWS. And that was just a sneak peek of the many features we released this month. For a full list, visit the link shown. This month, we're inviting two speakers to discuss our recently released State of DevSecOps report and follow-up guide. Here's Marion to get you started. Thanks, Jeremy. Hi, everyone. My name is Marion, and I'm a senior data analyst at Datadog. We're proud to introduce our new research study, the State of DevSecOps Report. For this study, we analyzed the security posture of tens of thousands of applications, container images, and cloud environments, with the goal being to evaluate the adoption of DevSecOps best practices. Here are just a few of our findings. At the application level, one of the most interesting things we found is that Java applications are the most impacted by vulnerabilities in third-party dependencies. So much so, our analysis shows 90% of Java applications are affected versus an average of 47% for other programming languages. Moving down the stack, we also analyzed vulnerabilities in container images and found that, as often is the case, operational best practices align with positive security outcomes. 
Namely, we found that container images smaller than 100 megabytes have on average 20 times fewer vulnerabilities than images larger than 500 megabytes. At the cloud account level, we analyze usage of long-lived static credentials in CI-CD pipelines, which is known to be a major risk linked to a number of documented data breaches. We found that only 37% of organizations exclusively use short-lived dynamic credentials, while 63% leverage long-lived IAM user access keys. These and the rest of our findings from the report show that there is still room for improvement when it comes to securing applications and cloud environments. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague Christophe. Thanks, Marion. As a companion to our State of DevSecOps study, we have also released a guide that describes how to implement common security practices for securing applications and cloud environments. First, we'll show you how to package an application in a small, minimal container image. This not only makes it more secure, but also faster to deploy. Next, we'll see how to use OpenID Connect to securely authenticate CI CD pipelines to cloud environments using only short-lived cloud credentials. This is typically much more secure than using long-lived access keys. Finally, we know that most organizations have to deal with large numbers of vulnerabilities and attacks to investigate. So we dive into some practical strategies on how to prioritize the security work based on real-world risk to make sure it matters and closes the loop. For the free insights, have a read at the study and the follow-up guide, for which we'll post the link in the description of this video. And now back to Jeremy. Thanks, Christoph. On June 4th, we'll be hosting a live stream featuring Christoph and others, where they'll share their insights about the DevSecOps report, followed by QA. You can register for the live stream by visiting the link in our show notes. And that wraps up today's episode. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion for a future episode, comment below or email us. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future episodes of This Month in Datadog. See you next month.